Hello, my name is Jonas. In this video, I will show you my updated workflow for creating footage from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K in HDR using an Aero Alexa PowerGrade. But before we begin, remember to like and subscribe, that's highly appreciated. So, it's been a while since I uploaded a video to YouTube, and that's because I've been working on a new website and video course, which have taken up basically all my time during the past 6 weeks. More info on that later. Another thing I noticed just the other day is that my channel now has reached and also surpassed 400 subscribers. So a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed, the 500 mark isn't far away now. So let's get into the Pocket 4K HDR stuff. I recently changed my workflow for grading Pocket 4K footage in HDR. So this video is an update to my previous tutorial called How to Grade Pocket 4K Footage in HDR using an Aria Alexa PowerGrade. If you haven't seen that one, I suggest you check it out before watching this video. Now, on this channel, I basically share my discoveries as I learn them. So, even though I try to bring you the best information possible, don't just take my word for it, or anyone else's for that matter, and always experiment and try things out for yourself. Another important thing to note is that hardware and software change, which can impact the validity and relevance of the information you get in one of these videos. A great example of this is in regards to the video card that I use for monitoring with DaVinci Resolve. The Decklink Mini Monitor 4K card didn't used to have support for the REC 2020 color space. So when grading in HDR on my LG C7 OLED, I was stuck with the REC 709 color space, since I couldn't activate the REC 2020 mode on my TV. Now, after an update, this Decklink card now also supports the REC 2020 color space, and can activate it on my LG C7 through metadata sent together with the video feed over HDMI. And recently, when I was experimenting with different color management settings in HDR, I also learned that, contrary to my earlier beliefs, the Pocket 4K Aria Alexa PowerGrade from Juan Malara actually works great in a scene-referred workflow, and not only in a REC 709 timeline color space, which I used in the original video. To demonstrate that this works, I'm going to use this drone footage, which I shot with the Pocket 4K earlier this summer. If you go into the project settings and color management, I set it up as I used to, in my older workflow. To output in HDR, the output color space is set to ST2084, which is not a color space, but a standard by the SMPT that specifies the PQ curve. You can also see that my timeline color space is set to REC709 gamma 2.4. The reason why this worked, which I found out quite recently, is that the SD2024 standard is color space agnostic. It doesn't specify color space and inherits from the timeline setting, in this case REC709. This means that the output will be in PQ HDR, together with REC709 color space, which did work. Now, when I experimented with changing the timeline color space to be in Arial Log C, the colors looked off and I thought it was a limitation with the Malara's power grade. However, since the SD2084 output inherits the timeline color space, it turns out that I was monitoring in the area wide gamut color space, interpreted as Rec709 by the TV, which is why the colors look so strange. And this can be confirmed by opening the scopes and choosing the CIE chromaticity option. Here, the active output color space is outlined which, as you can see, is the area wide gamut. If I change the timeline color space back to REC709 gamma 2.4, you can see in the scopes that REC709 gamut now is the active output color space. However, this can be solved with a very simple rule. Always use separate color space and gamma. If I go back to the color management settings and check use separate color space and gamma, it's possible to define an output color space so it's not inherited from the timeline settings. The REC 2020 gamut is here chosen by default, which is also what I use nowadays. But since you're watching in REC 709 or sRGB on a computer, let's use REC 709. The nice thing is that this makes it possible to now work in a scene-referred, also known as camera-referred, color space and gamma, such as Area Log C. If I choose Area Alexa V3 as my timeline color space, and area log C as my timeline gamma. You can see in the scopes that the active output gamut is still REC709, 
which is what I want. As you can see, the colors look very nice and as I expect them to look. A reason for wanting to work in a camera color space and gamma, like Airlog C, is that you will keep more of the camera's delivered information, and also have the possibility to later change the output between different delivery formats, like HDR or SDR, without the need to do a completely new grade for each format. So that's the update I made in my Pocket 4K HDR workflow recently, that I want to share with you in this video. If you have thoughts or questions, please leave a comment below. Also, remember to like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching, until next time, goodbye.